Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I have a very special card fold to share with you today. It's called a peekaboo slider card. Now up until recently, I had never heard of this type of card fold before, but I was looking for a very special card that I could make for a very special demonstrator. And I wanted the card to pack a real wow factor. And this card fold does that. So at first glance, the peekaboo slider card may appear complicated, but I'm going to show you how easy it really is to make. I know you're going to want to make some of these cards at home yourself. So without further ado, let's start stamping. So here is the peekaboo slider card. And when you open it, you get this sliding image. Isn't that fun? And you could put a photo here or a photo uh, in this portion. So there's a lot you can do. Now this is not the standard card size. The standard card size is five and a half by four and a quarter when folded. This measures five and a half by five and a half. So you would have to make your own envelope or use an envelope punch board. But I think for a special occasion, this card fits the bill. So the card I'm going to demonstrate is using the same designer series paper. This is our expressions in ink. Absolutely love this designer series paper. It is on back order until approximately June 28th, um, but it's beautiful. And of course, it coordinates with the um, artistically inked stamp set, which is this one here and then the coordinating dies, which I used to cut out my stamped pieces and this beautiful leaf. Let me show you the other dies. Here's another die that comes in this set. Absolutely spectacular, but we are not using those on today's card. I'm going to show you the basics of making this card minus the stamping and die cuts. So basically stamps, ink, and paper for this card. And as I've mentioned in the introduction, it's actually pretty simple, especially after you make one. So I've made a few of these now, and I have a few um, tips and tricks to share with you to make it even easier. So I am starting with a piece of basic white cardstock. This measures eight and a half by 11. And I'm going to cut it down at the five and a half mark. So just as if we were making a standard size card, and again, if we were making a standard size card, we'd be scoring that at four and a quarter. Okay. So that's our standard card size, but we're gonna put this aside. We're gonna bring in the leftover eight and a half by five and a half piece, and we are going to cut this to measure eight and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm just taking off a quarter of an inch Okay, and then I'm going to score it at two and three quarters. Okay. So when this flap is folded, this is five and a half by five and a half. So all the measurements will be on my blog as well. And the supply list, you can always go to the description of my videos and the link for each blog post that corresponds with my projects will be there. And I also know a lot of you uh, enjoy the music that I play in the backgrounds of my uh, videos and I get quite a few emails asking um, where that music is from. So that is also in the description of my videos. All right, so we have these two pieces. I'm gonna bring in another piece of basic white cardstock. This one, I've already cut it down to measure five and three quarters by five and a half. And along the five and three quarter side, let's make sure that's five and three quarters. Yes, it is. So along the five and three quarter side, I'm going to score it at five and a half. So I'm only scoring a quarter of an inch. So I'm just making a tiny little flap. Okay, so let me recap. I have my eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock scored at four and a quarter. Then I have my um, eight and a quarter by five and a half scored at two and three quarters. And my five and three quarters by five and a half scored at five and a half along the five and three quarters so that you have that quarter of an inch fold. And then after that, it's pretty simple. Okay, so now I'm going to do some decorating. I've already pre-cut some of my designer series paper. Look how stunning that is, you guys. Uh, I'm going to use my, my liquid glue. I'm going to use the wide, flat end. If you weren't aware, there's the, the tiny end. 
and the wide end. Surprisingly, not everybody realizes that. So I'm going to use the wide end. New bottle of glue, which is always exciting. It's the little things, right? <laughs> the little things that excite us. Okay, so this is going to be the front of my card. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue that on the front, just like so. Then I'm going to bring in this piece. And I have two more pieces of designer series papers also pre-cut to measure five and a quarter by four, which is our normal layering size when you're making a standard card. So I am going to, and they're all different patterns as you can see. Okay, all different. Um, I am going to put the pink. Now this is the inside of the card, not the outside, doing the two inside flaps. Okay, so I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to do the green on the opposite side. Okay, so, 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 so pretty. So there's our designer series paper. So now it's time to cut out the windows and I am using our stitched rectangle dies and this one measures, grab my trusty ruler, I can't live without this ruler. Um, so this one is two and one, two, three eighths approximately. So just, just shy of two and a half across and then lengthwise it's about four or sorry, three and three quarters. So, okay. So that's the size that I'm using. Now you can use different sizes if you want. It's just going to determine how big your window is going to be, right? So now I'm going to flip this over. Okay. Flipping that piece over. And this is where I, I cheat a little bit and make this what I find to be very, very easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my die along this fold line. Okay. So I'm just lining it up. And I'm making sure it's pretty much equal on the top and bottom in space. If you really wanted to, you can measure uh, an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom. But I just find this works for me. And I'm just going to take my pencil and outline it. Oops. And then open that up. Actually, what you can do is right along that fold, and just draw a line. So that's how you know where you're going to place this as you run it through your die cutting machine, which I am doing right now. All right, so I have my, um, my number one platform, my number two plate, which you need for die cutting, and my clear plate. And I'm going to put this on just like so, line it up and run it through and I do like to run it through a couple times because you're cutting through that white cardstock as well as that designer series paper now if you do not have a die cutting machine at home you can still make this card you would just simply um, cut it out with your scissors or an exacto knife and I will list the link in the description below of where I um, first seen this card and the inspiration for this card I'm gonna save that now I'm going to bring in this piece and bring this piece I'm going to line up this edge with this edge okay really easy stick with me so you see, I'm just lining up this edge with this edge. Okay, then flip it over. Take your handy dandy pencil. Draw your rectangle. Use your scissors, exacto knife, or dies if you have them. Bring it back in. 
Line it up and cut it out. One more die cut after this. So I'm going to pop this out and again, set that aside. I got my die and then close it as you would a card. And again, use your pencil so you can draw the placement for your next die cut. And what I like to do is I like to tuck this edge right underneath the barrel in the middle of the machine, as far as it'll go, and then I just push it down and then that kind of makes sure my die stays in place. Or you can use our magnetic boards or you can use washi tape to hold the die in place or a post-it note. That's all there is to it. Now we just stick it all together. Again, you're going to save that. What we're going to do now with my tea is um, bring in my base right here. And now what you want to do is you want to glue this portion to the inside of this portion lining up the die cut. So you see, these two pieces are gonna kiss each other and voila, everything's gonna line up perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is add glue to this inside piece because this outside piece is bigger than this. So add your glue or your adhesive to this piece. So just lining it up. Push down. So you see I'm lining it up with the top edge. You can't even tell it's there, but there's your inside card and there's the piece that slides across. Isn't that fun? So this is where we're gonna bring this piece with that tiny little quarter of an inch fold so I'm gonna take my glue again and I honestly find that this is like the trickiest part and it's not even that tricky but it's just lining this up to the inside of the card and where you do that is with your fold to the left you can open this up and this fold goes right along this edge, okay? So this fold on the left side is going to line up with the next edge of your card here. So we lined up the inside left of the card to the front and now we're gonna line up the right side of the card to this flap. Hopefully that makes sense. Maybe for some, maybe not for all, but you can see what I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. So I'm just extending that, you see? That's all there is to it, friends. That's all there is to it. Because how this works, okay, so you can see, is that's gonna slide right there. So now it's time to glue on your cut pieces. Now we're not going to need all three, so you determine what you want, or you may want a different color altogether, such as one I have here. And here's another one that I've done from a previous card. So depending on how you want to decorate the inside pieces, or if you wanted to put photos, would determine what pattern of paper you use, because you want to make sure you can see your, your sentiment that you're stamping. Take your pencil again, Draw the inside of your rectangle. Then we're gonna open this up. You can see that's pretty much right on the edge, which is fine. And I absolutely promise you, once you make one of these, um, it's, it's really easy. 
that's where videos come in handy because I know when I first seen this card I had to rewind and play and fast forward and play and rewind and play <laughs> until I could figure it out and I will show you my first card um, that I made with this fold um, at the end of this video so you see there's the next flap draw again and this is where I want to glue this one now this one does have the cardstock on it behind it okay I'm just lining it up on the pencil I like the glue because I can um, have a few minutes, well not even minutes, a few seconds grace to um, to adjust if I need to wiggle something a little bit. And I can see I need to wiggle that one down a little. There we go. I also have a little ink spot on there, but that's fine. So here's the finished card. So you can see you've got that different pattern shining through and then when you open it you get that secret panel popping through now sometimes if you go to open it you see how it's like hitting it's hitting this bottom piece and the reason for that is because this is thicker that's because this has that um, basic white cardstock layer behind the designer series paper um, so the way around that is you can just kind of bend this middle layer up a little bit and it'll open. So for this particular card, I've decided instead of using the coordinating artistically inked stamp set, um, I am pulling in my dragonfly garden because this paper is so beautiful. I just want to put a dragonfly on there and I'm gonna pull that out and out of my scrap basket I pulled out a piece of basic white cardstock and I'm gonna stamp this with the black memento I've been so excited to share this video with you guys I'm so excited that I'm finally doing it um, I have been really really busy out in the yard now that we've finally got winter behind us and nice weather um, my sweetheart and I uh, we've been creating a new flower bed so he's been cutting off all the sod and bringing in the dirt and moving all our plants and um it's just been a it's a lot of work we're putting in a cement patio so i wasn't able to um do a video for you guys last week this was what uh this was the card i was going to do for you last week so i'm really happy i'm finally doing it for you today so i'm pulling in my uh polished pink stamp and blends combo the light and dark i'm going to start with my light now I have my light and dark freesia so and guess what color next if you guess pale papaya you are correct I am using my light soft succulent for the body. Now I'm taking my clear wink of Stella and add some sparkle. I'm just gonna cut this out so I can punch it so it can fit in. I think I'm gonna put my butter my dragonfly mind you I'm gonna put my dragonfly right there but before I do that I want to stamp my sentiment because I want to make sure my dragonfly doesn't hide my sentiment where I stamp it so I'm gonna stamp you are an inspiration I'm gonna stamp it down here because I kind of want um, to hide this little bit of black ink or kind of make it tie in a little bit that little splotch bit so I'm gonna take this ink it with my black memento I'm going to keep this closed and hope that it's straight. 
There you go. You are an inspiration. Now we still have this piece to stamp on the inside. Now I'm using a sentiment from Pansy Patch and I know I'm kind of pulling in a couple extra stamp sets here, but this card is um, for a particular person. So I really want the sentiment to reflect what I want to say to her. Say you are an inspiration. The little things you do make such a big difference. So you see now that I've got that stamped, I can put this right there. So this guy needs um, dimensionals. to pull in some extra embellishments that are also part of this Expressions in Ink um, suite. And I want to just decorate this a little bit more. There's the front done, and you can see the pretty inside flap and that gold. And then, of course, when you open it up, you get that hidden message pop through. Now, you could leave the back alone, or you could add another piece of designer series paper, which I'm going to do. But I've decided. I am going to cut the middle out and I'll show you what I'm going to do. All right, so let's pop this out. I'm going to put this piece on first. And then I'm going to glue this on the inside and write my message. There's the finish card. And then the back nail. Okay. So let me show you another couple samples I've made using the same designer series paper. This time I used the stamps and the die cuts to decorate the front and some gilded gems. The sentiment is from the Inspired Thoughts stamp set. This is for one of my best friends for her birthday. And then when you open it, I've got another flower here and then I stamped on vellum. I glued vellum to um, to my cutout that was like this I just cut a piece of vellum with the same die and glued it and stamped with stays on um, also I should mention I did something kind of wild and crazy friends from the artistically inked we have the happy birthday and you notice my happy birthday is on top of each word because I cut that stamp in half so something you may want to consider doing with your stamps you don't have to but that's what I did um, and what else oh yes I also cut stamped and cut two of these flowers so that when I open this I had the yellow I wasn't seeing the back side of this flower so something to consider and then there's the back where I'm going to um, write my sentiment for my girlfriend
and then here's yet another one. This is using the Beauty of the Earth um, stamp set and designer series paper. Now I'm going to send this one to my dad for Father's Day. So I really have to hurry and get it in the mail. I had another card set aside for him, but when I was preparing for this video to show you guys some samples, I'm like, oh gosh, I gotta send that to my dad. So the sentiment here, which reads, being a good dad starts with being a good man. That is from a good man stamp set. You can see I stamped my trees and look, I have little critters. So that's from the Nature's, uh, Nature's Beauty stamp set. So when you open it up, that's what you get on the inside. So I've got Happy Father's Day. This is from an older paper pumpkin stamp set that I had. And again, like I showed, um, like I did the flower on this one where I wanted to have um, the back covered. I did the same thing here with the trees and the bushes. I just cut and trimmed them with my scissors to kind of make them fit. And then here too, I cut this um, a little bit more narrow so that it wouldn't go past the crease so I could actually close my card. And I really, I like that kind of like 3D look I'm getting. So really, really fun. And then I've got my, my little critter here up on a couple of mini dimensionals. Push that down a bit. And a little bit of glue down here so he pops up a bit. And then you truly inspire me, little bird. And then on the back, I just layered on some soft suede and early espresso. And then all my sentiments are stamped with early espresso, stamped right on top. And I used the Stamparatus so I can make sure I got that really nice and dark. And then I'll add, Dear Dad, I raised you well. You're the best. Love, Tina. <laughs> so that's going to be for my dad. This one's gonna be for my girlfriend, Ada is her name. We've been friends since we were nine, so I doubt she watches, <laughs> she's not a stamper. So that's for her birthday on the 29th this month. And then this one's for somebody special, um, another demonstrator, and this is gonna go in the mail to her. And now speaking of demonstrators, the first card that I made using this peekaboo slider card um, has already been mailed. I mailed it out last month. So for those of us Canadians who earned the uh, incentive trip last year, which took place last month in Maui, we didn't go. Um, so those of us Canadians who earned the trip, we had a awesome virtual event and a secret sister gift exchange. So my uh, secret sister is a demonstrator named Natalie and she lives in Quebec. And so I really, really wanted to make a special card for her and that's how I discovered this card fold. So I, I took pictures and I filmed the card so I could share it with you in this video. So this is the card I made for Natalie and I used the Timeless Tropical stamp set and dies. So this was for my secret sister. So I'm gonna be popping this in the mail today. By the time you watch this video, she should hopefully have it. But I just wanted to make a really, really special card for this demonstrator. So the, I should show you the stamp set first. One second. I used the tropical, timeless tropical stamp set and the coordinating dies. And if you remember in my previous uh, Stampin' Blends vellum technique I had stamped a bunch of uh, these papers well I didn't stamp them I used the technique and got them all uh, ready to use so that's what I use on the flowers I just stamped this uh, image and the leaves right onto that vellum technique I did a little bit of the gold foil cut them with the dies I used some of our new hand penned designer series paper and even though the flowers are a bit different those were the colors I wanted to use and the um, plumeria, which I love plumeria.
I have to tell you, friends, that first card that I made for Natalie, I couldn't stop playing with it. I just wanted to keep opening it and closing it. I'd never seen a card like this, and I was just so wowed. So that's why I'm saying I could not wait to share these cards with you. I hope you have a lot of fun making this card fold. I know I'm having a blast with it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Take care, and happy stamping.